With the raiding now becoming more intense and organised than ever, and food supplies under serious threat, the new governor, Philip Gidley King, put out a bounty in 1801 on Pemelwoy to be brought in dead or alive. So serious was the threat that a convict would have his sentence slashed or even pardoned, and gallons of rum would be a further reward if they took his head. King further gave orders that Aboriginals in the vicinity of Pemelwoy's tribal lands could be shot on sight in an attempt to drive back what he referred to as the hordes of natives plundering government farms. In this chaos, the bizarre theatre that has often characterised Australian history saw a number of escaped convicts make their way to Pemelwoy's camp and join his cause in what was quickly becoming a wider conflict of opportunity. Fairly soon, a large number of other convicts made their escape, with Irish Catholics going on to form a rebel army of their own that, over the next couple of years, would take on the British in the Australian Battle of Vinegar Hill in 1804 that, incidentally, ended up much like the first one back home in Ireland. In any case, as the year went by, it seems the ounces of lead he was reportedly carrying in his body, along with the multiple injuries he had sustained in the war, eventually caught up with Pemelwoy when he and a small war party were set upon in 1802 and shot, his severed head delivered to the governor soon after. Details surrounding Pemelwoy's fateful end are sketchy, but it appears that he may have been betrayed by members of his own tribe, who approached the governor and squarely blamed Pemelwoy for all the raiding, hoping to negotiate an end to the war by handing him over. The long history of mankind is clearly replete with many examples of the kiss of Judas, it seems, irrespective of the culture. <laughs>